Whenever you read an academic article into physical fitness, or an online article, or any type of academic research, or you watch a YouTube video about physical fitness, you must look at it as a contribution towards a knowledge base. Don't look at it for a definitive answer, because what academic research is, is a contribution towards a body of work, and that body of work can then influence how you train and eat. If you are new to this channel, thank you very much. I want to especially thank Every Damn Day Fitness, who gave me an unbelievably kind shout out. Who else in YouTube fitness, with his sort of following, does that? for channels such as mine, it's unheard of. And so if you are new, I do want to assure you, I do lift, don't be fooled by the t-shirt. Channels such as mine are part of this counter culture in YouTube fitness, trying to give genuine information. And so you are free to take any supplement you want, whether it's a supplement to overcome a deficiency, such as you are deficient in iron, so you take an iron supplement, whether you take a fish oil supplement because you have joint issues, in my opinion, that's called just being smart. There's a whole spectrum of supplements, whether you take fat burning pills, which in my opinion are a drug, it's completely up to you. It doesn't mean that anyone's better than anyone else. It's just this issue of transparency. This channel is a blank canvas and that's important and you know that there's no trickery going on in that I'm, I'm discussing fat loss when actually I'm pounding loads of fat burning pills. So in this video I want to discuss branch chain amino acids but also this issue that academic research is misrepresented and misinterpreted in fitness YouTube and in wider mainstream fitness. I'll give you two examples, Vegan Gains and Jason Blaha both misrepresent academic articles in my opinion. Any good academic research has to state its limitations and areas for further research. What you can do is you can read many pieces of research, you can watch people, and when you watch genuinely knowledgeable, respectable people in the industry, you'll find commonalities between their work. Common themes, for example, how many reps to lift. You'll find people like Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, Christian Thibaudier, Poliquin, they will have commonalities between what they discuss in terms of building muscle and rep ranges and you will find that actually all of these guys uh, recommend at some point within their work using volume to build muscle well that's great in my macro cycle I can put volume into my training but these guys they also talk about the benefits of heavy lifting heavy compounds for example and so in my macro cycle I'm gonna throw some of them in so that's the way that you should look at it as a contribution and so when it comes to branch chain amino acids dr. Brad actually posted about how his work is being misrepresented. This is what Dr. Brad Schoenfeld said, and I quote, it's important to look at the nuances of a study and not just blindly accept the results at face value. And in particular regard to the effectiveness of branch chain amino acids, this is what he says, and again I quote, to clarify, BCAAs can increase muscle protein synthesis, but supplementation is suboptimal to whole protein sources as whey and more expensive as well. And so let me give you an example of a problem with an academic study. So here's a study into uh, leucine and the people that were used in this study were untrained males. Now this is a problem for a study such as this. It's an instant red flag in my mind. Whenever you use untrained people within a physical fitness study, it can greatly influence the results. Poliquin has also talked about this as a limitation in physical fitness studies. This, the reason for that is because untrained males essentially their motor units are offline due to inactivity, no need for the body to use them, uh, and then of course over an, an untrained male in the, in the first few weeks of training these motor units are activated, the muscle fibers etc and therefore there are quite significant strength gains uh, fairly quickly for untrained men. And so this greatly skews research such as this. And so the online article that I'm talking about in this video by Dr. Brad Schoenfeld and others is called BCAAs are just hype. And I've linked it down below so you can read it for yourself. And in this article he explains what BCAAs are, of course amino acids being the building blocks of proteins. BCAAs have been found uh, in research to benefit muscle protein synthesis, the growth response. However, initially and instantly within this article, 
uh, it will be stated that a lot of these studies used animal testing. So there's another limitation. But importantly, within within this online article, Dr. Brad and others will state that actually in order to get an optimal growth response, that you need the full profile of amino acids. You need complete proteins, not just BCAAs, and therefore he, he uh, cites uh, research where actually uh, whey protein uh, supplementation was seen to uh, create a greater growth response than just supplementing, supplementing with BCAAs. And essentially the conclusion of that article is that he supports the food first approach to building muscle. Now here is where I need to be clear because I can feel the trolling coming to me by people who take BCAAs saying, I take BCAAs, they benefit me. Listen, so you can take BCAAs. There are many valid reasons you may take BCAAs. For example, you may have looked at the research and you can see that research suggests that there is promising information regarding uh, BCAAs and the growth response in muscle. And so you may want to cover all your bases. You may want to put some BCAAs in to your diet in, in addition to foods, maybe protein powders, because you believe, based on what you've read, that you want to cover your bases in that sense. And then you have the psychological reasons. I know people, I follow someone on Instagram who takes BCAAs for a psychological reason. This idea of taking this, this supplement which helps him to be zoned in on his training. But in no way would I look at someone who takes BCAAs and say you are wrong or look down on those people. The whole point of this video is that transparency is important and that you shouldn't take something at, at face value, you shouldn't look for one definitive answer, you need to view things as a contribution. And so would I take BCAAs? Well, I don't take BCAAs. I don't believe it's they have a significant impact for me. I like to eat whole foods. Does that mean that you shouldn't take them? Well, no, it doesn't. And that's the point of this sort of countercultural fitness YouTube movement with people trying to give you real information rather than pushing one supplement down your throat. And so I'm James Linker, this is Shredded Sports Science. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.